I do believe that you can have faith without belief. But I think when you do believe in something, faith isn't necessarily required. You can still go into some sort of unknown territory that requires faith, but I think when you reach a point of belief, faith isn't needed. What up, people? So today we are looking at what is the difference between faith and belief. In all of the study and research I've done, I have found that everybody has their own sort of definition of what these two words mean. Some people, it means the same thing. To me, they don't mean the same thing at all. So I thought I'd get to the bottom of it and look at what are the definitions of these words, not just in English, but going all the way back to post-Indo-European languages and Semitic languages and looking at all the different languages and how these words evolved and trying to find out what is the meaning of these words. What was their original intent? What was their original context before they evolved and changed? And by the way, speaking of evolving and changing, I actually think that the spelling of these words and the pronunciation, well, pronunciation, there we go, of these words has evolved, but the meaning has actually stayed relatively, I would say, 85%, maybe even 90% the same. So we can't go all the way back because unfortunately, I mean, okay, so we had a spoken language before there was any written language and we can't, it's impossible to know what the spoken languages were and how they sounded and how the words evolved from there. So we can only trace back so far into written languages. But as far as I can trace back, I traced it all the way back to the post-Indo-European language and the Semitic languages. And from the post or, or PI, P-I-E, post-Indo-European language, I'm just going to refer to it as PI from now on. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's not food, it's post indo yeah, that, whatever. But from Pi, we get the Greek language and we get the Latin language, amongst many others. But I'm using those two for what I'm going to do. And then Hebrew originated from Semitic languages. It's just kind of like a uh, big cluster truck of languages, but um, the, and they all intertwine. It's, it's so hard to do research on the etymology of words. It's just... It's insane. So I'm glad this is over with, but I'm now making a video on it. So enjoy the countless hours of research that I've done. You're welcome. Okay, so first let's look at faith and how in the Pi language languages it originated, the word faith. So it started off um, in the post-Indo-European, the Pi language. Damn it. Faith started off in the Pi language as B-H-E-I-D-H, -E and it is pronounced bathe, and it means to trust, confide, and persuade, and then that evolved into the Latin word fidere. I'm not going to pronounce these words right, so I, I apologize. And it means to trust. And then from there, the root of that word was the only thing used, and it was F-I-D-E-S, fides, which means trust, confidence, reliance, credence, and belief. And that was in the 11th century. And then it evolved into Anglo-French and Old French, feed, and foi, F-E-I-D, and F-O-I, and that is meaning faith, belief, trust, confidence, and pledge. And now today we have faith. So this next thing I'm going to mention is a quote uh, from a magazine called Unsearchable Riches in 1990. And it says, the Greek word for faith, which is pistis, also came from the word bathe by the beginning of the historic period on Greece. The Pi word for faith had phonically changed to, I'm assuming that's paith, to persuade. The root was modified in a way that relates to the Greek language to form the verbal adjective pistos, to believe. So this whole study that I did with the Pi language was beneficial, but the language that's even further back in that is Hebrew language or Semitic language. So let's look at that right now. And the Hebrew language is among the Afro-Asianic, I think I'm saying that right, family of languages. And one of the first languages that derived into that 
uh, family of languages is the Egyptian language. Then out of the northwest region of Africa came the Canaanite language and from there it derived into Biblical Hebrew and modern Hebrew. Now I wanted to look at what was the Egyptian definition of faith and belief but it's it's so hard to find that stuff. I mean, seriously, if you guys know what it is and you've found it, then please um, tell me, show me, it'd be great. But with Hebrew and Greek, it's easy to find those words and those things because every Bible scholar ever wants to study those languages, so it's all over the place online. But I did find some things, and so let's take a look at it right now. So faith originated from the Semitic root M. N. MN is to be firm, come firm, secure, and support. And this derived into both of the Hebrew words aman and amen, which amen is what we say at the end of prayers, which basically means truth, verily, verify, things of that nature. So aman, A-M-A-N, is firm, something that gives support and secure, derived from this root. So basically from aman came this word, which is a man, which is craftsman, and one who is firm and secure in his talent. Now, why is that important? Well, this should be noted that in Hebrew, the concept of faith isn't a concept at all, and belief isn't a concept either, because to us, we've kind of adopted this Greek philosophic thinking um, to where we say faith and belief, and it's kind of this hazy, cloudy, like, Ooh, kind of stuff but to the Hebrews it was very concrete and when they heard faith or belief it was a it wasn't even really translated like it's only translated into faith and belief correctly twice in the Old Testament but it could actually be better translated into trust and so these the, the our philosophical thinking is all up here and it's kind of just these abstract thinking but to the Hebrews it was very concrete it was solid there was no abstract thinking in that and they actually have a picture to go with the word and the picture that goes with the word for faith in Hebrew which is emunah and that the root from that is aman and from that you get mn from the Semitic language but when saying emunah, the image associated with that, which is the word for trust or faith, faith really, is a craftsman or an artist. Just FYI, thought that might be interesting. So here's another interesting thing. MN derived into Egyptian JMN. And JMN or Amon, A-M-O-N, is a Egyptian god, Amon, and then it turned into Amun-Ra. Specifically, he was known as the king of the gods. And this is what I found for Amon, but it didn't, the word Amon, A-M-A-N, did not originate from this A-M-O-N, which is Amun-Ra. But they did originate from the same root, the Semitic root, which is M-N. And I think this is really interesting to point out because there was a Semitic, the Semitic root that is both for uh, faith, belief, really, the word in Hebrew for faith is emunah, and believe is aman, and the root for emunah is aman, and so faith and belief are literally kind of tied into each other in the Hebrew language, but the root that's coming from emunah, aman, and also the Egyptian aman, amen ra God, is all of it is mn. Now, here's something interesting that I thought about when I was studying this is why is the word for M or the the root word however you want to put it for M N why in the Egyptian language and in the Hebrew language um, and there was a I mean obviously there was a split in languages why did they use that same root word for something supernatural it, I mean I mean think about it it's it's like they could have had a split but they had the Amman, Amun Ra, in Egyptian, and it meant the king of all the gods. And then in Hebrew, they chose that root to represent faith and belief in a god or in higher power or something. So why did they use the same root to have something a supernatural or a supernatural connection? <laughs> what was their supernatural before the Egyptians and Hebrews? I don't know. I mean, maybe this is something to think about, or maybe it's just how words work. 
So now let's look at belief. So belief in the Semitic uh, family of like, the Hebrew Semitic, it, it originated from the same exact thing that I just said about um, MN in the Semitic. So all the same thing for faith, it, it's the same thing for belief in the Semitic language family of the Afro-Asianic. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yeah, that's what it is. And then in Pi, belief and believe originated from L-E-U-B-H, and that means to care, desire, and to love, which is the word that love came from, believe came from, uh, and there was a whole bunch of other words that, oh, here it is, I have it written down in my notes, I should look at that. Words like believe, believe, uh, okay, nobody cares about these words, <laughs> no. it's like, le, furlough, lemon, libido, leaf, live long, lovely, lovely, no one cares. I don't know why I'm doing this. Then it evolved into a Germanic word, which is galab. God help me. Which is dear and esteem. Then it evolved into West Germanic, and it became galab. <laughs> oh God, I'll just put it up on the screen and you guys can try to pronounce it. To hold dear, esteem, and trust. Then it evolved into Old English, Galifa. Galifa. Okay. Oh, God, help me. Believe. Faith. Which that's what that means. Belief and faith. And in the 12th century, it evolved into believe and changed its spelling to believe, B E L I E V E, in the 15th century, the way we spell it now. So I was able to find a source that figure out how the pi root for faith tied into the Greek. Uh, word for faith, which is pistis, but I was unable to find a source that showed how the pi root for belief evolved into the Greek word for uh, belief, which is pistos. Um, and I thought I found it someplace, and I actually signed up for this website just to look for it. Look for it for literally like an hour or two this morning could not find it but I know it's there and I know that it originated because the Greek originated in the Pi uh, language family and so yeah I know that's where it originated not sure how it ties together not sure the chain of events but it happened and I want to read another quote from the online etymology dictionary um, I saw this when I was looking at the differences between faith and belief and I wanted to mention it because I thought it was pretty good and it says belief meant trust in God while faith meant loyalty to a person based on promise or duty a sense of preserved in keep one's faith in good or bad faith and in common usage of faithful faith less which contain no notion of divinity, but faith as cognate of Latin fides took on religious sense beginning in the 14th century. So faith wasn't even a religious concept uh, until the 14th century. Translations and belief had by 16th century become limited to mental acceptance of something as true from the religious use in the sense of things held to be true as a matter of religious doctrine so do what you want with that but to me that was like okay there is uh, even in the etymology dictionary there is a, a a distinction and a sense of separation that happened with these two words and meanings so now we have to put these definitions into context because i can just shout out all these uh, definitions and crazy weird words that i can't pronounce um, but if they're not in context, then what are they What are they good for? So let's talk about context. And for context, some people aren't going to be mad about this, but I am going to use Bible verses, and I will tell you why. So the words have evolved a lot, as we've seen in the definitions. They're, um, the definitions are relatively the same, but they've evolved a lot in the word structure and sound and that nature, with a little bit of the meaning kind of. But the Bible has been around for thousands of years and it was written in Greek and in Hebrew. And so the Bible verses that I'm going to look at are out of translations that are a direct translation rather than thought for thought. So 
Just FYI, in case you didn't know, the reason that there's so many different translations of the Bible is because some versions are translated thought for thought, while others are translated word for word. Meaning, so things like the message translation of the Bible, is literally somebody looking at the Greek and Hebrew sentence and saying, I see what you're saying, but it could be said differently, and so I'm just going to basically put in my thoughts of the translation of this. But something like what I used to read, do read, the NASB is a lot more of a word for word. So it doesn't really make sense unless you actually look at the Greek and Hebrew online of what it means um, because the word structure can be weird, the sentences can be weird, and you just kind of tilt your head, but it is a lot more accurate than a lot of other translations, which there's kind of a scale where you can get Bible translations like in the middle, like the NIV is a mixture of thought for thought and word for word, but the message, the passion translation, all that is thought for thought, and then there's over here, which is word for word. So I like to read the ones that are word for word because they're a lot more accurate. And also in this, I'm not trying to I'm not I'm not trying to make an argument for God or faith in God. I'm just talking about the context of the word because I know there can be a circular argument. Obviously, it's like I say God is real and you say why and I say cuz the Bible said so. Obviously, that's a circular argument, but I'm not I'm not doing that here. I'm I'm using the Bible literally because it is a text that has context uh, from these word definitions that we've found and so we can look even further and deeper at the context so hope that makes sense if it doesn't God help me okay so for faith I am looking at Hebrews 11 1 as probably everyone could have guessed and it says now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen so as we've discussed, faith, the word for faith in Greek is pistis, which means uh, assurance, belief, believe, faith. And it comes from a primary verb. And just FYI, um, there's a verse in James that says faith without works is dead. So it makes sense that it's a verb, it's an action, work, faith without works is dead. So the that word is Pytho, I assume, which is to convince by argument, true or false, by analogy or pacify or conciliate, to assent to rely by inward certainty, I'm emphasizing all the important parts, agree, assure, believe, have confidence, make friend, obey, persuade, trust, and yield, and I'm getting all this from Blue Letter Bible online, so if you want to know the words in Hebrew or Greek in a lexicon or whatever, just go to blueletterbible.com and look up what it actually says rather than the English translation because the English translation is can be cannot be correctly translated a lot. So anyway, so that's the word for faith, and it says faith is the assurance. So what is the word for assurance? Assurance is hypo stasis a setting or place under a thing put under a substructure foundation that which has foundation is firm that which has actual existence a substance real being a substantial quality in nature of a person or thing the steadfastness of mind firmness courage resolution confident firm trust assurance and it comes from words hypo which is a place beneath and his stemmy, which is stand, abide, point, bring, continue, a covenant, establish, hold, lay, present, uh, even in the context of time. So with that, putting those two words, faith is the assurance. It looks to me like faith, which is this verb, because it comes from a verb. So it's, in, it's basically, in, a, in essence, it is an action. Based on something that you believe, something that you think, it is a action. So faith is more so of an action of the the inward certainty but faith is the is the assurance so that action of whatever you are under the mindset that you have the thing that you are choosing to i'm going to have action in in this thing under this thing this thing is going to cover my thinking cover my mind and i'm going to have action in it and I'm basically, I'm, I'm summarizing these words together. So it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. So hope, what does hope mean? Um, and it's this word I can't pronounce, 
to expect or confide hope trust and the primary root is to anticipate usually with pleasure confidence faith hope so when i look at that i need to say okay, so the verse says now faith is the assurance of things hoped for so we have to know what does hope mean so the bible it says now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and so it's like it's kind of like the bible is giving you this definition there isn't a verse like that for hope but there is a verse telling you what hope is not which is romans 8 24 which says in hope we have been saved but hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what is seen and that ties in directly with Hebrews 11.1, 1, which the second part of the verse says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So, now we have this firm action that we take when we choose to be under this mindset of something that is not seen. That faith is the assurance of things hoped for, is the assurance of things that are not seen. Faith is a complete darkness it is a complete i am choosing to take action in this mindset in this thing that i am putting over and under my life and i have no idea it's just darkness it, it i can't see it and i think that's in heart mind everything like it's just you cannot see it it's just darkness and so my definition from summing all that up is faith is the willingness to be intimate with the unknown. To me, that sounds that sounds right. To me, that sounds like yes, that is that is what faith is. Whenever people take have faith in something, they are choosing. There it is the willpower to be intimate, to be close with, to relate with the unknown, the complete mystery of something. So now for belief. So for belief, I have a couple Bible verses um, and this one is John 6:29 which Jesus said to him, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. So it's actually taking work to believe. What, what is that work? I would argue that that work is faith. And then in John 14, 11, believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise believe in the works themselves. So believe, it's almost like believe in what you see. It's not an unknown. It's believing in something that is right there in front of you. Even if this requires faith to believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, at least believe, at least believe in what is seen and the works that are right in front of you. And then John 14, 29, now I have told you before it happens so that when it happens, you may believe. Again, going to there is something that is known there is something that is seen there's something that is right in front of you that again it's like you believe this because it's seen it's right in front of you so the greek word for believe is pistuo which is to have faith directed unto believing faith giving oneself or to have faith and this word is also a verb which leads back to faith without works is dead um, but it comes from pistis, which is the word for um, faith, and then uh, pytho, all of that comes from the root pytho, which is convinced by argument, true or false by analogy, pacify, um, yeah, all that good stuff. So you can see even in their definition, which I say there, it's the lexicon's definition of these words, they are intertwined. But when you look at the context, which I think that is so incredibly important for all this, when you look at the context, you see that they are indeed different. So now, after having said all of that, what is the difference between these two words, faith and belief? Now, these definitions that I'm about to tell you are ones that I've constructed on my own based on all of this uh, work all of these all of this research that I, I've just done and I do think there is a significant difference in these so belief to me is holding a position in the mind or heart based on evidence that has convinced your mind that this position is the whole truth and then I would say faith is holding a position in your mind and heart based on no evidence but choosing to take action with that position regardless of what you know what you feel or what is said so as I said before faith is the willingness to be intimate with the unknown and I wrote down here that belief 
contains the peace to be intimate with what is known. Faith requires a choice and action and belief there's no choice needed. Because if you believe something, it's like, like, well, I can't not believe that I am holding this coffee cup right here, you know, um, but that's separate from a lot of philosophical ideas. Um, but there's different things. It's like, what is concrete? What is evidence? There's like, there's no arguing that. That is fact. So to me, belief is fact and faith is more of a, it could be fact, but it's a theory. So maybe that's going a little too deep into things, but I, but in essence, I think faith requires a choice and you have to take action and belief, you also have to take action, but there's not really, it's kind of like when you believe something, when you have, when there's fact, there's no arguing with that fact. Yeah, you can say, no, I choose not to believe it, but there's no arguing with it. And so there, that's why I say that there's no choice needed, but faith requires a choice because it's like, you can look at that and you have, some people have every evidence they need to say, I have faith in God. And some people say, well, that's not evidence for me, which leads to this point. This is totally subjective. I have tried to come up with a objective definition or point of view, but all of this is totally and completely subjective to the individual. Because for someone, they could say, well, I believe in this because this is the evidence that I have. And to another person, they could look at that evidence and say, that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't believe that. But they might have faith in it. They might say, this could be out there, but that evidence isn't good enough for me. And then some people just hold on to faith and they say i i don't i and, and to clarify and to say once and for all i do believe that you can have faith without belief i do think you can have faith in something without belief in something but i think when you do believe in something faith isn't necessarily required you can still go into some sort of unknown territory that requires faith but i think when you reach a point of belief faith isn't needed. So that's in the context, but also I want to say another thing is that I think that the words and definitions, obviously they're intertwined a lot and we looked at context of scripture, but I have to say, I think also a split in thinking with faith and belief happened uh, when Greek philosophy came into play. And I don't think that's a bad thing that there was a split because I do think based on everything that I just said and everything that I just talked about, I do think there needs to be a distinction between the words because even though they are kind of closely related, they are also very distinct and set apart. And so, you know, a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about Greeks and philosophy and Greek thinking. And they're saying we need to go back to Hebrew thinking, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that I love the examination of thoughts. I mean, Hebrews, like there's not a whole lot of details in the Bible because it's a very Hebrew thinking Bible. Like they said, Jesus came and he was here. Greek thinkers are saying, what did he look like? How do we know? Um, like, where's this and that? Show me the facts. But Hebrew thinkers are like, okay, you said it, so it's, it's real. Like, that's all I need. It's kind of like they don't worry about details kind of thing. But Greeks are like, give me all of the intricate, how it works and everything. And I know America has, at least America, and maybe more of the worldwide culture now, has accepted those uh, Greek philosophical thinking. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think that's bad. I think there's room for both. I think we need both sides of thinking. Um, but especially in the context of faith and belief, I do like the idea that they are distinct. I don't think they're the same thing because there are people who take action in things that are completely unknown. And there are people who take action in things or who won't take action in things unless there's concrete fact about it. So this is a very long video. And if you made it all this way, thank you. And I hope that clears things up and I hope that creates a huge distinction between faith and belief. So. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, comment below your thoughts, and comment below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So um, as always, this is something that we can talk about on Tally TV on Thursday, so check that out if you haven't seen the video. Uh, click up here where a card is somewhere, and uh, I will see you misfits in the next video. Peace!